So we have found for you today a hub of music, food, and culture. That place is the Zeppelin Station found here in Denver, Colorado. Oh, yeah. But we are here for only two things. So we're here for two different restaurants. One being Rock and Lobster, which I'm a huge fan of. And the other place we're going to is... Is Sir Kitchen and Spirits, which has a rotating, wordly inspired menu. Oh, yeah. uh, currently, it has such items as French inspired 72 hour sous vide, sous -vide. Uh, short ribs, cauliflower, um, Risotto like Risotto, thank, yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. With salmon and uh, yeah, chicken, chicken wings. wings. Yeah. Curry chicken wings. Curry actually, chicken which, wings. That's going to be interesting to see because I've never had curry chicken wings. So Yeah, all sorts of wonderful things. I hear my stomach hungry. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely you know, I'm getting a little bit hungry here. So let's get out, let's get on in there and just get some food. Let's go. Okay. All right, so today we're at Cirque Kitchen and Spirits and we're here with the owner. Uh, hi, my name is Chef Brandon Becker. I'm the owner of Cirque Kitchen and Spirits. How can awesome. I help you guys today? So we're excited because we've heard a lot of really good things about this place. Uh, I, first of all, I love this whole setup you have here. This is just really like rustic and relaxed. But um, so first things first, how did you come up with your sign for the uh, for your for your business? Yeah, so here at Cirque Kitchen, we connect people through food um, from around the world. That's our whole mission is to connecting people through food, through different cultures and regions throughout the world. Okay. So that's why in our logo we have the circle for awesome. the world and then the mountains for our home base here in Colorado. I see you have quite a bit of things on your menu here and it's from definitely from a lot of places. Now, how often do you switch that often? Yeah, um, so everything we do here is seasonality. We try to be as local, organic, and sustainable as possible. Very nice. Yeah, we change our menu every eight weeks. Oh, that's um, awesome. Oh, nice. To kind of educate people yeah. through food. Okay, and how do you choose uh, which cultures you want to end up going through? Because I see you have quite a bit here. Um, that's all relative on what's in season. Okay, so it literally goes according to what you know you can grow locally and get all the stuff. Yeah, so I mean, oh, awesome. I can get like the seared salmon dish right there, yeah. one of my favorites. Um, you know, the cauliflower, they're just starting to pop up. Yeah. And people are harvesting those, okay. so we rice that. Um, spring peas are huge. Okay. Um, baby carrots, mushrooms, and then we do uh, seared velasco salmon, which is Ooh. a nice, sustainable fish. So I see that your your menu is balanced in such a way that there's a lot of healthy elements into each of the different dishes. So you, you tend to like putting a lot of vegetables and, and be very careful about the nutrition of it as well as the taste. Yeah, so like my whole thing is just like people eat with their eyes. I know a lot of people might not like vegetables, but vegetables to me are the brightest, most colorful thing that you can put on a plate. Mm -hmm. If they're fresh, if they're good, if yeah. they're in season, yeah. they speak for themselves. Yeah. Definitely, no, Definitely. I agree on that. Yeah, there's been quite a few times where I've been absolutely blown away how much better the yeah. vegetables can make a meal be even compared to like a protein or a starch. So we definitely want to order quite a few things here from what I can see. Um, from what I'm looking here though, the curry and lemongrass, is that a Indian inspired or more of a Thai? Um, so the or even curry, something different? <laughs> the curry lemongrass is my take on like a butter masala curry. Okay. Oh, nice. So Very it's nice. a butter masala base. Um, and then we do the Madras curry rubbed chicken wing. Very nice. Okay. And brine. Uh, fry. Very nice. And then we do a second fry of the pickup. Ooh. And then we toss it in this okay, okay. very nice, nutty masala curry. So I'm excited to go ahead and start ordering up quite a few things from here. You got you know, what you want in mind? Uh, first of all, I would love to see some of this braised short ribs. He says it was French inspired uh, off camera here. And it says a uh, 72 hour braising process, I think you said, for the short ribs. Yeah, so it's a 72 hour sous vide short rib. Oh, nice. um, we use chuck flap and that we season in a bourbon togarashi rub. Okay. Sous vide for three days and then we do roasted asparagus and mushrooms on top of that with a Bernays sauce and then you get a side of Sounds truffle good. fries. Wonderful. Okay. So I, we would definitely love an order of that. Uh, you spoke very highly of the seared salmon, so that looks beautiful. Awesome. Fried chicken sandwich. Fried chicken sandwich. And I, we definitely gotta do the curry and lemongrass tossed chicken wings. That's just, right. that just sounds amazing. So, so we got the eight-piece wing, the steak and fries, the seared salmon, and the fried chicken sandwich. Perfect. I like that. Sounds good. Awesome. We'll okay. get that started for you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So we serve Rocky Mountain Soda Company. Okay. They are a uh, local Colorado soda company. 
happening. It's all non-GMO, all natural, gluten-free, and vegan. Very nice. Um, and they make some really tasty sodas. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this uh, all started. Soda and, and a ginger beer yeah. as well, please. Awesome. All right, so what are we making first here? So what we are doing here is we are starting everything for the seared salmon dish. Okay. It's one of my favorites. So what we start off with here is a little bit of rice cauliflower. There's some mushrooms, some spring peas, some baby carrots. Trying to get that started. Okay, that looks really nice. Then we're going to hit it with a bunch of veg stock. Okay, that okay. We make from all of our vegetable scraps. This is kind of our risotto. Yeah. So instead of doing rice traditionally, yeah. uh, risotto is French for to stir. So all I'm going to be doing is cooking this and stirring it constantly like that. And then this guy here, once we get all this water evaporated, we'll just see those bubbles. Awesome, awesome. So then here is our Verlasso salmon. And then all we're doing is we're gonna set that right here in the pan. We're gonna press it down to get a nice sear on there. And then here we are getting the vegetable ready for steak fry. Okay. What kind of oil do you guys use? Um, we do a blend of sunflower and avocado oil. Okay, very nice, very nice. So we got asparagus. asparagus. Very nice. Honestly, oil, oil does make a difference because, I mean, first of all, if people have allergies, peanut's the biggest one, I would have to say, that people have a lot of allergies to. This one that he's using, not many people that I know of at least have a lot of allergies to it. And also, it, it adds a difference of flavor to it. Like, if you use a really good olive oil. Yeah, so the burning point of sunflower and avocado oil yeah. is about, I believe, 325. Yeah. Really hot. You don't have to worry it's about it burning. Worry yeah, about you know, and it still adds that flavor to it on top of everything he's doing. So that is gorgeous. So then all I'm doing is constantly stirring this, and basically we're going to reduce this veg stock down to offset, which is basically means I can put it on a plate and it will stay in its place. Yep. Um, and then once we're done with that, we add a little bit of Parmesan to make that Ooh. risotto texture. Very nice. So what would you say is the difference between risotto and what you're making here? So like a traditional risotto is made with Oreo rice um, and that whole method is, mm -hmm. again is to constantly stir. Yeah. So when you make like risotto traditionally, you're, you're stirring the rice consistently to release those gluten. Um, but with here, we're taking a play on risotto. Yeah. So instead of the rice, we're doing cauliflower and nice. that will give it that rice feel. Yeah. Uh, this liquid is kind of all set. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's when we add our Parmesan, and then we'll be ready to plate. Wonderful. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, there we go. Okay, very nice. Oh, that's a nice amount of Parmesan. Handful of the cheese, all. You'd be surprised, y'all, that right there, what he's doing, takes a lot of work. It's not something that's like automatic. When you flip it, you gotta really, it's a lot in the wrist there. That is beautiful right there. And then we move into the plating. A sec is French. Uh, it basically means like a nappe. So as you see here, you can see the water well, veg stock, I should say. Um, it's there, but it's, it's thick. It's not, like, super runny. I'm loving this right now. I'm excited. Like, it's been a minute since I've been in the kitchen like this, so, like, it just looks He's great. taking a modern twist by using the cauliflower rather than the rice. Yeah. Um, and, again, it helps with a lot of allergies and dietary restrictions by using that. And it just changes up the flavor profile. <laughs> just enough to be unique. Yeah. What exactly you're adding on, on top of that, uh, the, the green sauce? Uh, chimichurri. Chimichurri. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then we're finishing it with a bunch of fresh peanuts. Do you guys make chimichurri the traditional way? The way I make my chimichurri, I roast jalapenos, garlic, onions, and then I add that to a blender with fresh cilantro, okay. um, oil, nice. lime juice, and okay. I blend it all up. Nice, nice. So this here is our seared salmon with cauliflower and oh, beautiful. Chimichurri. Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. 
That's going to be delicious. And then what we have here is our fried chicken yes. sandwich. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Preserved tomato, chili paprika dredged, and then our goat cheese ranch that we oh, make. Oh, that, that looks beautiful. Oh, nice. That looks so sexy right there. Oh, that's the sous vide uh, steak. Sous vide is basically when you're cooking something, you put it in a bag and it's cooking it with, uh, I believe it's a pressure, right, Chef? Uh, sous vide translates to under pressure. Under pressure, yeah. So that's a beautiful asparagus mix. That looks gorgeous right there. Wow, that looks amazing. And those are the famous wings here. Those are the famous wings. That looks phenomenal. And what kind of sauce is that? Renee says, okay. So classic bread. Beautiful. That is gorgeous. Steak and fries. Chimichurri wings. Sweet. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You guys are very welcome. Okay, so here we have all this amazing food. Uh, thank you so much for this. We appreciate it. Yeah, uh, and we're looking forward to trying everything that you've uh, concocted over here, honestly. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Let me know how everything is. Definitely will, man. Thank you so much. Oh we're now ready to taste test some of these wonderful creations that you guys got to see behind the scenes of the cooking. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get started with some of these wings here. And again, this was butter, chicken, and lemon. Curry and lemon curry. Or something. Yeah. Whoa, Based whoa, whoa, whoa. off a uh, yeah. bleh, 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 butter chicken uh, recipe. So let's go ahead and grab one of these and take a nice deep look at it. Ain't that deep? Hey, you don't you don't soul, stare into the soul of your chicken. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, mm -hmm. I've been doing something wrong. It's good. You can taste all like the curry. Mm -hmm. It's a nice it's even so, coating for the crazy. flavor. Yeah. Actually, if you look at the inside of it, you can see like some yellow, like the curry and stuff, the moistness. You like when it's moist? Mm. Yeah. Do you like moist chicken or do you like dry chicken? Mm. Some people like dry chicken. I, I'm not a fan of it personally. You know, the, the way they cook it does lock in a good amount of moisture into the chicken. You can see the curry powder even below the layer of the skin, which adds, just allows the flavor to linger. You know what I'm saying? Like it actually seeps through. Yeah. Like you can see the, like the yellow of the curry inside the actual chicken wing. See, look, all that right there. That's all like the curry. Which I wonder how he does that because the fact that it actually goes in. Unless the only thing I can think of is maybe he scores it. Scoring, by the way, is like when you're making chicken, like you cut a, like a line or on it or whatever, and then it helps like stuff go inside of it more. Or sometimes people stuff it. He could always put the curry on it. Either way, that. Not on the bones, because you can't let meat, uh, chicken meat go to waste. So are you are you the kind of people that huh. you eat the entire thing, or you leave like some, some meat on it? I only eat as much as I can reach. Okay. I'm not savage. My family would kill you. <laughs> That's all the meat. The, that the Hispanic and minority would, what are you talking would about? consider that not well There's eaten. There's some skin. That's skin. Oh my God! No, just let's let's move on from this abomination here. That's all. That's all gristle. Make fun of the white guy again, okay. That could be you then. So let's do the salmon. The so seared. it's a um, seared salmon and then a cauliflower risotto with the uh, chimichurri sauce. Oh, As he was saying, the risotto is uh, to stir. So it's a constant motion. You add some vegetable stock to normally arborio rice, but in this case it's now um, cauliflower instead. You uh, then cook it down with some vegetable stock until it gets a little bit thicker and then you set it uh, with some Parmesan some cheese. Then mm -hmm. you have some of the uh, chimichurri, which is um, essentially jalapeno, garlic, oil, cilantro. and a few cilantro and a few other things all mix, so that's, uh, that's mixed his, together. This version of chimichurri. Right. Yeah. All kinds of chimichurri is actually made with parsley. Good to know. And then the salmon is a sustainable uh, farm-raised yeah. version, excuse me, version that they get local to here. That's fire. I do like a cilantro based one. Not as much as regular chimichurri, but the way he did that was actually super refreshing and simple. You liking those wings there, huh? Curry is one of my favorites. That's fire. You can taste the cilantro on it. It's very like, I want to say spicy. Cilantro's not spicy. Flavorful? It's just, you, you can taste the freshness, the veggies, the cauliflower, it's, it's, it's very good. You can't, you're, honestly, it's, it's just, it has a good flavor to taste it. Taste some of the sauce by itself? Yeah. I do like a cilantro based chimichurri it does taste good yeah, a lot can, of american places do it with cilantro and not parsley which it still comes out really you great. can tell the uh cilantro and the jalapeno 
and the taste of the garlic inside the sauce yeah. each individually, which is kind of cool. Yeah, the whole, the whole mixture, you know, the salmon, the crispy, you know, the, the charred salmon with all that combined actually tastes really good. That's actually really good sauce. That's something, especially that's really good for like a summer day. Spring, summer day is a good, I mean, in general, but like, especially for like, if you want something light, not too heavy, nothing like too crazy, that's actually a really good meal to have for like one of those. And he was, he was saying that he tries to get as much in season as fresh yeah. as possible. The simple ingredients, simple enough to make it, you know, where it's seasoned, but it's nice, but it, it, it's still eccentric. Cause there's already enough stuff on it that you don't really need to go over it on the side. Gives it a nice crispy edge to it. So let's do the chicken sandwich. That one, we may just all need to be taking bites from it. Not a problem. You promise you, you have might, no terrible diseases I mean, that you might share we, to me? Yeah, we have a knife anyway, so yeah. I have all the diseases. You hear that, guys? He has all the diseases. Now, uh, he did say they ha house make their ranch out of goat cheese, I believe they said. Mmm. Ooh. Nice. It's a goat cheese ranch. Simple. I like this one, but it's, they weren't kidding when they said extra spicy. <laughs> and, um, so you're telling me that uh, a Puerto Rican can't take the, the spicy level? Uh, that's not, well, first of all, we don't do spice. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. That's other cultures. So oh. yeah, mm. I just like spice, but even but, though this is not, this is not spicy. It's gingery. Like, yeah. But the chicken does lock in a lot of the flavor there. Okay. Um, and move this here. The ranch. Very well done. Very, very tasty. Now it does have a, a little bit of some sort of- Peppers, ah, char. I was about to say some sort of heat. So it's a little bit of a pepper sauce or something? Yeah, it might be the actual peppers. Mm -hmm. Actual full uh, roasted peppers or? Looks like it. Yeah. Nice. I don't know if it's red peppers or if it's spicy, but I mean, it's, it's peppers in it. But, the, ch the chicken as a whole does lock into a lot of the moisture there, um, which deep when you do fry it is, is a bit of a technique to it. Uh, they really? do have a very thick uh, bread there, which is nice. I like the spice on it. Yeah. It's a nice mixture of the savoriness from the ranch and with a little bit of heat from um, the, rest of the, the rest of the stuff Ooh. there. I think this is what it is. That's making it spicy. Mm. I don't Maybe it, it's not habanero. Oh. No, that's the spice. Mm. No, I think there's a sauce on it. Either way, I like it. The chicken's crispy. The spice actually adds some nice flavor to it. I like the goat cheese um, ranch. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty unique. So Simple, not too much, not too crazy, and uh, just delicious. And again, he's very particular about not just uh, sustainability uh, and seasonality, but also just health healthiness and how visually yeah. appealing they are. Ooh, that is actually, that's grabbing some heat on it. It has some heat on it. So let's try this. Let's go so this grab the, last one here is his uh, is braised short ribs. That's right, that's right. With that's right. a Bernays, Bernays sauce. sauce. Yeah. Well, and basically Bernays sauce is a reinforced butter sauce. The details will be somewhere over here-ish. You say reinforced? Yes, I did say reinforced. Like. Thickened and reinforced. It's probably not the right technical cooking term, I know. We'll put it there, like you said. <laughs> we'll put it there. <laughs> um, My videography is being a little nuts, y'all. So, uh, they do sous vide the um, braised short ribs for 72 hours. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, slice it up with some uh, mushrooms and some asparagus, it looks like. P topping it with a Bernays sauce. They have some... Um, Fries. Shoestring mushrooms or a shoestring potato fries. Um, the truffle oil? With, I believe he said white truffle oil. Okay. oil. We were talking about truffles earlier, about what kind of details about them. Mm -hmm. So, what, what do you know some of the basic information we should know about truffles? Um, so, truffles are something that's not easily found by people in general. So, when restaurants get it, they, I mean, truffles can go anywhere from $20 to $200 an ounce. Wow, um, so they're very expensive. Worth its weight in gold. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's because it's either trained dogs or pigs, and even then, it's very hard to get them trained because it's underground. So when they're sniffing, they're sniffing for this certain thing. That's why it's so hard to find, and that's why they get imported because there's, it's just, it's almost impossible. But when you have it, it's kind of, it's a very earthy flavor, very earthy, very crazy uh, smell. Very intense. Many people have seen 
that they have had truffle oil, unless you go to a good restaurant similar to this one, um, most people when they go to like a grocery market and they buy truffle oil, that's actually not the legit one. If you go to like a good restaurant, you're most likely getting a good truffle oil. But when you're going to like a grocery store or something like that, usually. So the one is like it's 20 bucks yeah, for a bottle like that. It's exactly. usually um, truffle essence rather than actual truffle oil. E exactly, exactly. Um, but let's try the, the meat here with the Bernays sauce. Oh, bro. I want to see this. Oh, wow. Right? right? I know. Mm. So that was a right without the sauce. And like that beef is so tender for me having been um, that, cooked yeah. for 72 hours. And that's because, so when, when it's sous vide, that pressure makes it so it, with the heat, the pressure and all that, just mm. basically breaks down everything inside of it so that it gets that soft. And that's why like a, somebody with no teeth could eat this. <laughs> Literally. No, no could, joke. Like it's that it, soft, it falls apart. Yeah. Like you could gum it to death really easily. And then you just get the rich indulgence yeah. of the Bernays sauce. Um, it just comes through super strong. Somebody can give it a good gumming. And so, you, <laughs> uh, so you get the difference between like the rich beefiness yeah. and then the rich butter. And it kind of um, wars for his fire. attention. Uh, I, I love the mouth. fact that he uses a lot of veggies in his dishes, especially like the seasoned ones in local. Right. Um, the asparagus is perfectly roasted. Well, not only, as he said, is it visually appealing, but it helps maintain a lot of flavor. Yeah. So in the meantime, out of all the dishes so far, what is your favorite? Ooh. Each of the different things has its different values and, and flavor profiles. Uh, the risotto was really tasty, especially with um, with the cauliflower. Yeah. But I, I, and the curry, I love the taste of curry. Yeah. Like my dad's been trying to experiment with making his own uh own curry mixture and then making curry ketchup but i'm sorry that beat 72 two hours of, yeah. of divine cooking yeah uh it's a little hard to beat i'd say this then that but that chicken sandwich too oh, like the juiciness uh, and then it has a nice crisp and then the, the no, ranch it would be this and then this then that then this yeah it's 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 hard but that uh, chicken is really good that short rib probably yeah. the chicken for me then the risotto yeah. um and then the the wings and like that's not. It's still good. Whenever, you, whenever you put things on a ranking system, it's always yeah, kind of like yeah. a, a. This is phenomenal, especially the chimichurri on it. Right. But in terms of like the, how this like breaks down, it's, it's just good. And it just makes all the vegetables super soft. Yeah. And, but, you see, and the one thing he was saying, like we, I think we said it earlier, but he switches his menu every eight weeks. Every eight weeks, every he eight switches weeks, his menu according to, to what he can find. You know, what's seasonal, veggie wise. Right. Which is phenomenal because if there's something that is, you know, you can get for, for very. Big amount of fruits and veggies, so. It really does help. Um, it keeps everything rotating fresh. Is is business exciting? Uh, it's in a nice community center um, here at the uh, again. It's the Zeppelin uh, station. Cirque is the the Cirque name kitchen. of the the kitchen, the little stand. And then the, you also have a bunch of little pop up vendors that show up every so often. So you just have a, a constant rotation of food and and things to go shopping. And it's right here in the heart of downtown Denver. Yeah. It's just a very nice, lovely place to, to come and visit. Definitely come by, show them some love, uh, try the different foods. It's never going to be the same, which is awesome. Every eight weeks, you're going to have something brand new, something different, something amazing. So definitely come by, you know, let them know, hey, the wandering food dude sent you. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to our channel so that we can highlight more <laughs> of these wonderful restaurants all over the place. Yeah. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you like our content. Leave any sort of comments. Um, did you like it? Did you, did you like it? Where do you want us to come visit next? All that kind of thing Could is very useful. Could you taste the food that we had here? Oh, wait, uh, not, not through the TV, not yet. We're hoping. Soon, um, soon. But all those things are very useful for us. Uh, comment, let us know how you liked it. Tell us what you thought about it. Definitely subscribe to us. All social media is The Wandering Food Dudes on every platform. We will have it there. It's on our links on YouTube. Let us know how we did. And other than that, as we say, always try different foods. Always try everything. Support your local businesses. The biggest thing, the biggest thing you can do is support a local business. And as always, keep on wandering. Yes. Aloha, everyone. We're The Wandering Food Dudes. I'm Poetic. And I'm Fish. Join us as we travel throughout the U.S. promoting mom and pop restaurants. Learning of their culture through music, food, and drinks.
local Colorado soda. How are you going to add that in there? <laughs>